Hello, this is Michael McCarthy. In this video, we're going to be looking at the feather creation system in Ornatrix. This system was designed to create feathers for iconic or realistic birds using the Ornatrix hair system to uh, generate feathers. You can see that I have an iconic character here. I'm just going to scrub through. It has a little bit of an animation and it has some basic feathers set up for the wing. Uh, usually when you're doing wing feathers, you're going to uh, rig these in some way. This is pretty rudimentary, but um, will certainly get us to where we're going. What we're looking at today is how to propagate feathers over our entire character's mesh and using the Ornatrix feather system to do so. So to start out, what I've done is created a sub-object selection for polygons where I would like to generate feathers, which is mostly over this entire character's body, but we're definitely occluding things like the beak and the eyes. So with that sub-object selection, what I can do is I can just go ahead and I can click the quick hair option. Now in this latest release for the feathering system, you can see that there's actually a feather groom set up. And what this is gonna do is when I click on it, it's gonna create a new feather object that's propagated on this body. So if I go and click on the feathers, you can see that a number of different modifiers have been created in order to create this entire feather system. The original object has been referenced into this secondary uh, feather stack and the uh, sub-object selection has been used to get our overall propagation of feathers here. So you can see there aren't any feathers on the beak. I might just deselect so that you can kind of see a little bit better. And we have a general feather groom and a general feather shape to our character. So I'm going to go in and just adjust a few things about that. Let's first walk through what's been created here. So if I select the feather object, you can see that we have a guides from surface operator. And when we go in, uh, we can see, I'm just gonna turn off show end result, that this generates guides for where we want them on the mesh all the way through. Now, one important thing to note is here we've chosen the sub object selection so that we're not generating anything on uh, the beak or other portions of the mesh. And that's pretty important. A fairly high root count has been used here because these, each one of these roots is going to be a feather that is then going to be passed on to our hair from guides, which is going to duplicate those feathers and uh, give us a little more full feel. One very important thing that's been added for the feathering system is the UV channel here. In creating feathers, you're going to want to use uniform distribution. And for that, sometimes you need to have a different UV channel. So if we just go and look at the character, you can see that we have UV channel one. And this is probably what you're gonna texture on. So if I go in, you can see maybe more important parts are larger and you have a good setup here for your painting of your UVs and that's all great. Also in UV channel two, if I open the UV editor, you can see that we have the same UV layout the only thing that's really different is these have been normalized and you can normalize these just by going and click on pack normalize and pack normalize will allow us to get a more even distribution. If I go into my guides from surface here, you'll see that if I chose channel one, it would be hard to get that distribution that we want that is even across everything. So using channel two will allow us to do that. Next up the stack, you can see that we have surface comb, which is very common uh, for grooming either fur or other things like that and works very good for feathers. Now in this surface comb setup, we've uh, you know adjusted what the longitudinal combing can be and you can puff that out or bring it back in, whatever you prefer to do. And you can adjust how that surface comb is gonna work, which we're gonna do momentarily. Right above that, we have hair from guides, which is going to do the propagation and interpolation between your guides from surface and create many, many more. If I turn on show end result, you can see that all those actually get a render setting afterwards, but right now they're just kind of still planes. We've also choose the uniform distribution here, as well as our UV channel, and you can set your count to whatever it is that you want for your end result of the number of feathers you need. Here you can see that we've used a sub-object selection as well to generate our final number of feathers on. Another important piece that's been added to the feather system and for creating feathers specifically is the rotate strands modifier. This allows you to rotate your feathers in any sort of direction. Normally you'll use orient based on strands, which is the default option here 
and that is going to orient them so that they flow over the surface of the character like a feather would. You can adjust the angle to anything that you want, even with orient based on strands, and you can do this independently um, of each other using a map or something like that. So that's a very useful modifier to kind of tune in in your productions. Next up the stack, we have our render settings. And you can see in render settings, we're just going to use a billboard type look. And if I just kind of zoom in here, you can see that the shape we're creating is creating a feather type of shape on this mesh. So we can make it larger or smaller and we can adjust exactly how this is gonna look. So if we wanted to add a uh, portion to the feather and make it fatter in the middle, uh, we could do that or make it a little thinner, we could do that. So this is a really nice modifier to adjust your feathers to different sizes. Last but not least, we have our mesh from strands. And this is really gonna allow us to output our mesh to any renderer that will accept a mesh. So if we're rendering out to V-Ray or Scanline or Mental Ray, we should be able to render these feathers in our favorite renderer, which is a very important thing to do. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at getting more into grooming and styling our feathers so that they go the way that we want on the character's surface.